Okay, so hi, welcome back to Ecoboot. I'm recently having a lot of work uh, throughout the day, so it's kind of hard to film and upload a new videos. Uh, but now I'm coming back. Uh, from now on, I'll be uploading a uh, videos every week. So uh, there will be a lot of uh, things for you to learn. So uh, today we're having a Mercedes Benz C300 W205, and uh, it's a uh, pre facelift version. So uh, right now on the dashboard, uh, you can see a uh, message that says uh, ESP inoperative and there are several complaints that I've received from the customers. So uh, as you may know, uh, with vehicles that is in good conditions, uh, we only need to uh, press the brake pedal a little bit to turn on the engines by using the engine start button. Uh, but um, for this vehicle, uh, we have to press really hard, like putting some effort to it to uh, crank it up. So uh, you can see here, I'm pressing all the way down and once the engine is started, uh, there's still a message that warns me about the, uh, the ESP being inoperative. Now take a look at our sentries. It says that a uh, switch A for the um, brake pedal has a malfunction. So uh, you may think this was an uh, easy diagnostic, right? Um, I did think so at first, but uh, after swapping a uh, brake pedal sensor, uh, our problem remains unchanged. Oh, there's another issue that I forgot to mention. Uh, so. Uh, what I've noticed is that when I set up the uh, tire pressure for this car, as you can see here, um, it says that a uh, run flat indicator is being inoperative. Now, uh, with the uh, ESB inoperative message on the dash, uh, we cannot set up the uh, warning for the tire pressure too. So that is uh, pretty much all the problems on this C300 W205. So uh, with vehicle that has the uh, ESP inoperative malfunctions and the fault on the scanner about the uh, brake pedal switch, I began to uh, slowly fixing these problems. So uh, at first, I checked for the wires that comes from the ESP to our switch and there's no open circuit. Uh, next, I change another brake pedal sensor and there's nothing happen as well. Uh, the fault code is still on our scanner and we still have to press the pedal really hard to turn on the engines. Now it all comes down to our ESP control unit and on my hand here is the ESP unit from the vehicle and I've replaced another one for it. Later on I'll show you how to replace as well as the uh, calibrations. Um, now so uh, with the original box uh, when I open it up uh, there's a lot of water inside of it and I think the reason is that uh, the uh, rain water flows from the windshield cowl and leads it to our ESP unit. Now uh, there are several symptoms you will likely to experience when this ESP unit uh, break down. Like uh, the uh, steering wheel, uh, it will be very hard to turn it. Um, so uh, what do we have next? Um, uh oh, the transmissions. Uh, we also cannot shift between gears because when we shift gears, it requires signal from the brake pedal switch, right? Now, uh, when we're not having that signal from the ESB unit, we won't be able to uh, change our gears. So uh, now I've replaced another unit and let's see if our engines is easier to turn on. So uh, before replacing the ESP control unit, I have to uh, press the brake pedal all the way down like this. Uh, it's really hard and makes my customer very upset. Um, this is after I change another one. As you can see, it's quite easy now. So I think that is the uh, problems when we have our ESP control units is being malfunctions. Uh, there's no warning message on the cluster and we obviously uh, can set up the uh, tire pressure. Okay. 
So I uh, needed to mention uh, this is what happens when I change another ESB control unit to uh, different vehicles. Like, uh, we will receive a file code saying that the VIN stored in the control unit N30-4, uh, which is our ESB, uh, is different from the VIN retrieved from the vehicle. Uh, this is because the, the uh, VIN number that's stored in the ESP control unit is different from the VIN of this vehicle. So uh, with these problems, we will have two solutions. Firstly, uh, we're going to use the uh, special functions in Sentry and rewrite the uh, VIN number into our ESP control unit. And uh, secondly, and I think this is the uh, most common one, um, we're gonna use a software called DTS Monaco, which is uh, used especially for programming and coding sequence. So uh, if we want to do any uh, setting or calibrations, we can use either this software or the um, Vendiamo. They're the same things. Um, as you can see here, I'm copying the uh, VIN number from this vehicle to the ESP control unit and the VIN that's stored inside of it is already changed. Now, after um, uh, uh, rewriting the VIN number, uh, we also can read out the file codes on this uh, DTS Monaco, and here we have no DTC file. So uh, to sum up, after replacing the ESP control unit, uh, we receive a file code saying that the VIN uh, that's stored inside of it is different from the vehicles. And by using a uh, software to uh, rewrite it, there's no DTC left in the memories. So that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you learned a lot uh, about this uh, ESP control unit and of course the uh, calibrations. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please put it in the comments or email us at uh, support.ecoboot.com. Uh, uh, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the uh, next tutorial.